<laughs> Welcome. This is how to send your kids to the best, most expensive colleges in America for pennies on the dollar. If you're like many parents I know, you just want your children to be happy and well equipped for life. Maybe get a great college education like Stanford, Harvard, Yale. Go to good graduate school like MIT for engineering, UCLA for medical school, or UPenn for business and become a well-respected consummate professional, maybe a doctor, corporate executive, maybe even a Supreme Court justice. The good news is that we can do all that. This is how to send your kids to the best colleges, best most expensive colleges in America for pennies on a dollar. My name is Trevor Ramos. And so what do I mean by send your kids to the best most expensive colleges in America for pennies on a dollar? Anyway, well, if you and your child learn and execute these strategies, you're going to be able to go to really expensive and really prestigious schools, and you're not going to pay what everybody else pays. These are schools where, you know, former presidents, CEOs, and so forth, and you're going to know what the secrets and the ins and outs are to getting the money that you need. So that's our objective here. So these are colleges like Baylor, Case Western, Johns Hopkins, Claremont McKenna, NYU, Pepperdine, George Washington University, Dickinson College, Chapman University, Texas Christian, UC San Diego, Tulane, Dartmouth, and a lot more than that. And, you know, if you know what these schools cost, which you'll find out about, you'll know that um, they're expensive. But what we're talking about are getting significant reductions off of the cost of attendance, you know, paying what no one else pays getting the kind of money that very few people get to get the same education. So how do we get the money? Well, the first thing is is that we need to know what category type of family that we are and we need to know what our strategy is in order to get money. So if you're, you know, someone who has high income, there's a specific list of schools that are best suited for you that will give you money. If your income is moderate, but you have real estate or something like that there's a, there's a specific list of schools that are fit for you so we have to talk about that and that's where the first problem arises first problem arises is when a parent is operating under the wrong assumptions and thinking that they don't qualify or that they're barking up the wrong tree so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to avoid costly mistakes these are mistakes that cost you tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's definitely not fun to have to tell somebody that they would have done it differently as after the fact. You know, one of the things that I comments I get a lot from parents is I wish I would have known you sooner. Or I wish I would have known you when our first two kids were going to college. You know, so that's the first step is we got to learn how to avoid the costly mistakes. We got to be operating under the right assumptions. You got to be going at this like someone who knows how it works. Okay. The second thing is we're going to learn what makes a college and university offer scholarships and grants. Listen, there's a lot of myths out there about what makes a college give you money, you know, what makes a college not give you money, or why someone didn't qualify, or why someone qualified. And unfortunately, the fact is, is very few people will tell you exactly why they got so much money. Very few people will tell you that they got money. Right? It's not an easy thing for someone to share with you how much money they make and how much they're paying for college. Nobody really wants to talk about that. So because of that, a lot of information gets clouded and you have parents who are sending their first, second child to college and they don't know what makes a college to give them scholarships and grants and they all they know is what they've been told. You know, and we're gonna find out very clearly how to do the math to find out how, you, how much money you're gonna get. So we're gonna learn how to calculate how much a college will offer you before you apply. The time to find out how much money you're gonna get is not after you've gotten accepted to a college. It's before you apply, right? So whether you're gonna be paying for college in two years, in one year, in eight months, in four years, it is very important that you know how much college is going to cost you and how much money you can expect before your child applies to colleges before they fall in love with any college and if you think that people with high income don't qualify for grants or students with mediocre GPAs don't get scholarships or the cheapest way to pay for college is to send your kids to state or community colleges and having them live at home or that all there is to getting scholarships and grants is filling out a FAFSA you want to pay very close attention to what I'm going to show you here because 
in the next few minutes I'm really going to debunk all those assumptions. It's very dangerous thinking. So our agenda for today is we're going to know our deadlines. It's one of those costly mistakes. It would be horrible just to miss a deadline that would have gotten you a $35,000 scholarship. You know, um, We're going to work on having a list of colleges that will accept your child and give you money. We're going to find out how much these colleges cost. We're going to find out how much you are expected con to contribute for college. And we're going to find out what steps you can take to pay as little as possible for college. So that's really the idea here, right? We're trying to send our kids to the best, most expensive colleges in America for pennies on a dollar. Right? That's the objective. Does that sound good to everyone? Okay, awesome. Well, not too long ago, my family was just like yours. You know, both my parents are actually teachers. And I had a younger brother who was also college bound. And I played football and I ran track because I thought that was how I was going to get the scholarship. I was operating under the assumption that athletic scholarships was going to be my best strategy and the best use of my time. So I had a 2.8 GPA. And my SAT score in today's numbers were 1720. Just so you know, a perfect score is a 2400. And I couldn't see how my parents could pay for college without borrowing the money. It just took some simple math and it didn't make sense to me. So it became a concern for me. So I went to my counselors and my teachers and their advice was, hey, if you want to save money on college expenses, go to community college. It's cheaper because your SAT scores and GPA are too low. And I wanted to go to a top private university, Boston University. This is my dream college. I would, I, I, at the time, I would do anything to get an education there. But it cost 200 grand or $50,000 per year. So what did I do? Well, I quit, ball, I quit the football and the track team, and I spent hours in libraries, coffee shops, and bookstores over the summer and during my senior year. And I focused on my grades and SAT scores and finding out what colleges want to see, what they're willing to pay for. I called, emailed, met, interviewed admissions and financial aid officers to get them to tell me anything useful. I was very persistent, and I didn't. unfortunately, I didn't give up on this dream. Maybe you have a student out there who really wants to go to a top private college and the odds maybe are stacked against them. Or maybe you want them to get a really good education, but it's so expensive. So what's great news for me is that what I learned paid off big time. All, those, all that time I spent focusing on this, I got a four-year financial award valued at $178,000. And 165000 of it was free money I didn't have to pay back. I got more money than the valedictorian with a 2.8 GPA, right? Isn't that crazy? Now, is my, am I telling you to not get good grades? Am I telling your child to not get good grades? No. But the point is that there's a strategy for a particular kind of student. And if you think that a student with a 2.8 GPA doesn't get money to go to, scholar, to college, you know, think again. So when I graduated, you know, I really felt like I was born to do this. I became a college planning specialist. I majored in accounting and my first job was to be a college planning specialist for a financial planning firm and my job description was to help their clients save money on college expenses so that they don't liquidate their savings and investments. So you, you might have a client that's worth two million dollars but if they have you know four kids you can see about half of that go away just on college. So it's definitely not a joke, and you know the even the wealthy have determined that you know that they really want to talk to somebody who really knows what they're doing, and um, this is very expensive. So you want to find somebody who has a strategy to get them the money. And I built up a reputation. Started working with business owners, retirees, doctors, dentists, college professors, contractors, investors, people that were unemployed people that didn't have any college savings, people that were divorced, attorneys, accountants, created a very, very big reputation. And I started to get these kinds of results for these clients. So these are the actual results for clients that I've worked with. So I started College Funding Remedies. It's been in business for about four years now for myself. Uh, gets your child accepted to top colleges, maximizes your grants and scholarships, and draft plans so that you can pay for college without getting buried in debt, spending your life savings, sacri sacrificing your current lifestyle, or going plain broke. So this is an example of one of the students that I work with. You know, here's a student 
that their parents did not was very hesitant to have them apply to a sixty thousand dollar school, John Hopkins University, and he wanted to be in aerospace engineering. And Johns Hopkins has an amazing aerospace program. And actually, one of my clients, um, I hooked this kid up with one of my clients who recruits for an aerospace company. So next year, he's going to have an internship with an aerospace company. And because he went to such a really good aerospace engineering college, Johns Hopkins University, it's a perfect match. You know, this, this recruiter is already interested to meet the student. And he got $47,000 a year in scholarships, grants, financial aid to attend. That's $191,000 over four years. So he gets to go to one of the top engineering schools in the country, schools that many people want to go to. And he is not paying full boat, but he's getting all the opportunities that you would get going to a school this expensive and prestigious. Here's another student. You know, it's a funny story with this this student because her parent had sent two kids to Cal State's one to sit Cal State San Bernardino and one st- one to uh, Cal Poly Pomona uh, both were a hundred percent out of their pocket and she was in a dilemma because this child had really high goals for herself and uh, we were able to get her fifty four thousand dollars per year and the school only cost fifty eight so it cost them a little over four thousand dollars to get them into this college so that was she's another one that said, "Hey, I wish I had known Trevor sooner because, you know, I I would have saved a lot of money. You know, she got two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars to go to a really good school. She wants to do international relations, so this is a really good school for that kind of stuff. And uh, no doubt she's gonna have, um, you know, graduate opportunities available. But because she saved so much money for her undergraduate education, and she has plenty of room for her to go to really one of the best graduate schools in the country." So milestone number one is you have to know your deadlines. You know, the UCs, and you have to be one of the first to submit, first couple thousand. You don't want to be uh, submitting these things on the last week. That's not, that's not how, to, how to position yourself in the best way to get the money that you need. UCs, the applications open up in August, August 1st, and the last day to submit is November 30th. You got to think about that because when your student goes back to school, say they're going back to school in August or September, they literally have a few, like, two to three months to get in position, right? The Cal States, the application opens up October 1st. Last day to submit is November 30th, and you want to be one of the first to submit here. The private colleges, the deadlines vary across the board from October 15th to February 1st. That's why you have to have a list of colleges ready to go so that you can put up a game plan for the list of for what colleges require the applications to be submitted early. So if you want to apply, some many of the applications are open now for private colleges. I love private colleges because they give out the most money in most cases. If you want to apply early action, early decision, those applications can be due as early as October 15th. And regular decision, if you're not even trying to apply early, some schools require their applications as early as December 1st to February 1st, but you don't want to be submitting on the last date. Give you an example, if you want to apply to USC, they have to turn in their application by December 1st, and you want to be prepared, right? For financial aid, maybe your school takes applications on a rolling basis, but you still want to turn in your financial aid forms early and on time. So for, in terms of if you're applying early action, you want to turn in your financial aid forms. Some, some of the schools, their last date to submit um, financial aid forms would be November 15th to December 1st if you're applying early action or early decision. If you're applying regular decision, then the last day is February 1st or March 1st, but you really want to turn these things in before. That's right. So take a look at the college admissions and financial aid forms now so you can understand what is required of you. Turn them in early. You don't want to realize what is really required of you weeks before the deadline because things take time. You don't want to find out. You know, it's sad because I get a lot of phone calls during the last week or month to turn in financial aid forms. And it's a very tough conversation to have with somebody because they don't even realize how much is required of them and how much planning it takes to really get the most money because they're operating under the assumption that all you have to do is turn into FAFSA or all you got to do is apply to colleges 
and then it's going to be a nightmare for applying to colleges where none of them have any money, right? So master number two is have a list of colleges that will accept your child and give you money. So sit down with your child to understand what they want in a college. Where do they want to go? What do they want to study? What schools are best for what they're going to major in? We need to create a list of colleges. I suggest applying between eight to ten colleges, you know, if we're trying to maximize scholarships and grants. And we need to find out how much money these colleges will offer. Not every college is totally willing to write a check to anyone who wants to apply there. And there's different types of families that different colleges are trying to attract. So we'll talk about this a little bit later. But this is a very, very big point. By now, if your child's going to be a junior, or if your child's going to be a senior, and if your child wants is going to be a sophomore, and they want to go to really top private colleges, we need to have a working list of colleges now so that we can understand where this child needs to be, what their chances are of getting in, and how much this is all going to cost. So more on this later. So milestone number three is find out how much these colleges cost. Right? So here's a key buzzword you got to know for when we're talking about how much colleges cost. Cost of attendance is the key word. Cost of attendance. I'd write it down. Burn it into your brain. College cost of attendance is the yearly cost to attend a college. It includes tuition, books and supplies, room and board, personal expenses, and fees. When I talk about college cost, I'm not just talking about tuition. The, you have to pay for more than tuition to, to make sure that your child finishes with the education these days. right? And this is the official definition that the Department of Education uses to determine and calculate how much a college costs. It's a very important number. This is all going to tie together, so you want to remember this. Okay? Cost of attendance. So p cost of attendance is a per year number. So here we have USC, UC Berkeley, Florida State, University of Washington. Okay? So USC is a private college. UC Berkeley is a UC. Florida State is a state college. University of Washington is a more of a flagship state college that's one of the top state colleges you know so let's talk about them real quick USC is about two hundred and forty eight thousand dollars per child or sixty two thousand dollars per year if you're from California UC Berkeley is hundred and thirty three thousand dollars or thirty three thousand dollars per year if you're not from California UC Berkeley is $244,000 or $56,000 per year. If you're from Florida, Florida State is $85,000 or $21,000 per year. If you're not from Florida, Florida State is $152,000 or $38,000 per year. If you're from Washington, University of Washington is $108,000 or $27,000 per year. If you're not from Washington, University of Washington is $186,000 or $46,000 per year. So if you're looking at these state colleges and you're not from that state, it's almost double, right? And it you have to know whether a college is willing to give scholarships and grants to a student who is not from that state, whether there is a special program that allows out-of-state residents to get scholarships and grants because if they don't then you have to come up with the difference okay so that's one of those mistakes you don't want to be operating under the assumption that a state college is going to give you a lot of money right but there are like for, for instance University of North Carolina is great they give you money no matter what state you're from University of Virginia same thing but we need to know that so number four is we need to find out how much you are expected to contribute for college, you the parent and the student. So this is the PDF version of the FAFSA. It's pretty old school. We don't use these anymore, although I have had a few of my students say that they went to high school FAFSA nights and they literally were going off of the PDF version. This thing is submitted online now, but I just wanted to show you this so you can see what I'm talking about. This is a FAFSA, so it's a free application for federal student aid. It's the most common financial aid form. Okay. When you fill out a financial aid form, it calculates how much you're expected to pay 
per year for college. Okay? That's called your expected family contribution. When you fill out this form, it's a calculator that determines your expected family contribution. You fill it out, and it says here's what you can comfortably, comfortably afford for college. And you file it every year like your taxes. Your expected family contribution, that number that comes out when you fill out this form, can range from zero dollars, can range from zero dollars to ninety-nine thousand dollars, basically a hundred thousand dollars. And it's the same at every school. All schools use the same formula, for the most part. Okay. And two people with two different income can have, with the same income, can have a different EFC. So because this thing can range between zero to like a hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever you do, make sure that you're talking to somebody who understands what each of these questions means and what kind of impact it has on your bottom line. Okay? Because one question, one answer completed with an incorrect answer can cost you a lot of money. Right? And I see this time and time again. You have to know what each number is going to have on your bottom line and why they're asking every question. So whatever you do, don't fill this form out alone. Talk to somebody. You know, even if it's a counselor, talk to somebody who can help you to answer these questions in a way that is going to be most beneficial for you. And I'm not talking about lying or perjury. I'm talking about being strategic in your answers. Right? Because it's a very sensitive question. There's a lot of people that will mistakenly put their home equity on this FAFSA when it's not asking. And we're going to go over some case examples that I can explain to you that show you the difference between when you fill this out with some strategy, knowing what all these questions mean, versus when you just fill it out at the last minute, really not knowing what kind of impact this is going to have on your bottom line or how much you pay every year for college. So the top 74 factors that expect that affect your EFC, which you're expected to pay for college. Number one, parent income. Number two, parent net worth. Number three, student income. Number four, student net worth. Number five, household size. And number six, number of students in college. Okay? One of the fastest three months of your life. March 1st of your child's senior year, which is eight months, eight months from now, if your child is going to be a senior next year, that's the last day to submit financial aid forms. And that's when most people find out what they're expected to pay for college. April 15th of your senior year. That's when you see how much financial aid you got or did not get. And May 1st of your child's senior year is your deadline to select a college. You got to put down a deposit. And then three months from now, you have to come up with the money. Three months from then. So it happens real fast. You turn in the form, find out how much you're expected to pay, you see how much money you got and you didn't get, and then you have to decide on a college. So the system is designed so that you don't find out what you're expected to pay until after your child has already been accepted to college. And if you know what you're doing, you'll know your expected family contribution before you select colleges with your child. Okay? So you want to go on Google right now, or not right now, you want to go, go on Google after this and type in EFC calculator so we can find out how much you're expected to pay. And if you see it, don't worry, we're going to talk about strategies, but that's really something that you need to know now. Milestone number five is we need to find out what steps you can take to pay as little as possible for college. Okay. Like tax planning, there are different strategies for different families. Actually, I was talking to a really advanced accountant that he works with people that make income-wise two fifty to a million dollars a year, and because a lot of those people, about half their money is going to taxes, you know, if you can do a strategy that, you know, can cut your taxes by reduce your taxes by twenty five percent or cut your taxes in half, he's saving you a lot of money. And there's a lot of strategy goes into that, right? Not every strategy applies to every family, though. It's two to three strategies per family. So here's a divorced family. Father's income is three fifty, mother's income is seventy five thousand. All factors are equal. Well, the first thing we need to know is what forms need to be completed, and when we're applying to a college, 
well, does this college just take a FAFSA? Do they have their own financial aid forms? Do they have additional financial aid forms that they ask for? What do they want to know and how do they determine their decision as to how much you're expected to pay? See, all schools use the same formula, but some schools have more questions than others. So you would want to know if this school is going to ask you only 174 questions or if they're going to ask you 500 questions what their policy is. Number two is who chose the child as a dependent for 2014 this year coming up and the following year. Actually the following year, right? Because we filed taxes for um, we're going to be filing taxes for this year in January. So who's going to claim the, the, the child as a dependent then? As we can see if we file with the mother EFC is going to be $7,800. If we file with the father it's going to be $88,000. So we need to know which colleges are just going to ask for a FAFSA. And we need to know which parent we need to file under. Does that make sense? So if we file under the mother, it's $7,800. If we file under the father, it's $88,000. We need to know what financial aid forms this college is asking for to see which number they're going to use. And we need to know who's claiming the child as a dependent. Right? You see, you see how much of a difference that makes? It's amazing. So here's a real estate and business owner. Family income is $120,000. They got a real estate um, property that's worth $340,000, $42,000. All factors are equal. And the question is, 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 is the real estate a personal asset or a business asset? Okay. Is it showing up on your Schedule E as a rental property or is it in a corporation or is it scheduled as a business asset? Well, if it's a business asset, the business value is not needed on the form because any business with less than 100 employees, you don't have to list on the FAFSA. Well, because we knew that, the parents going from paying 31000 almost $32,000 a year to twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars with one move. That's just one move. Okay. So there's different strategies for different families. Business owners, high income, divorce, no college savings. That they're in a lot of debt. Their one person is unemployed. If they're already in college, single, so forth. So here's a case study, and I use this case study because if you're under the assumption that someone who makes three hundred thousand dollars doesn't qualify, this is going to be a perfect example for you. And if you're, if you're someone who has a million dollar net worth, this, this looks pretty interesting, right? It's, it's only to show you that if this person can get some money, then, you know, you don't have much to worry about. You know, you just want to know what all the strategies apply to you because, you know, this is where we get pretty good. Uh, household size, five. Number of students in college, two. When we fill out the financial aid form for, the, for the, um, this child coming up, EFC is 39 thousand almost forty thousand dollars it's not bad it's pretty high but what can we do with this well here's the magic formula cost of attendance what it costs every year to go to college minus your expected family contribution that's the number that pops out when you fill out the financial aid forms that equals your need COA minus EFC equals need that's how it all ties together whatever the school costs per year minus that number that comes out when you fill out your financial aid forms equals your financial need which is your eligibility for financial aid and the question is is what colleges will meet your financial need okay it's very important because you can have a low EFC your EFC could be zero and will be going to a thirty thousand dollar school and and need thirty thousand dollars but that college will not meet your need. And you'll think that you make too much money, but the reality is that that college did not have any money to give you. So $50,000 per year minus $10,000 per year equals $40,000. Number one question is what colleges will meet your financial need? So we need $40,000, right? Now, if the school gives us $10,000 and we needed $40,000, we're $30,000 short. That's not good. 
We want to go to the school where if we need $40,000, we get what we need or close to it, $40,000. So I wanted to go through my client files and I found someone in a very similar situation or a very similar EFC to what I just showed you. Okay, Their income is two seventy six. their net worth is $800,000, and their EFC is 39000 and they got 37% off Pepperdine. So let's see if Pepperdine can meet our need because we picked Pepperdine here. It's a very simple it's a very similar example to that example I just showed you. So I wanted to go through my client files and find somebody that looked just like it, okay? And they were going to Pepperdine. This kid goes to Pepperdine right now. So let's show you what happened here. Well, cost of attendance was sixty-two thousand dollars, expected family contribution was thirty-nine thousand, and their financial need was twenty-two thousand two hundred. And did Pepperdine give them the twenty-two thousand? You bet. University Alumni Grant, Christian Service Grant, Pepperdine Grant. These people got grants. Okay? They saved $87,000 by planning. And why did they save the $87,000? Because they picked the school that was going to give them the $87,000. They could have easily went to another school and it would have cost them $62,000 per year. 62,000 but instead they went and they saved 87,000 they, they went for 40 so mouse that's milestone number five find out what steps you can take to pay as little as possible for college so this is how to send your kids to the best most expensive colleges in America for pennies on a dollar number one know your deadlines number two have a list of colleges that will accept your child and give you money number three find out how much these colleges cost number four find out how much you are expected to contribute for college and number five, find out what steps you can take to pay as little as possible for college. So I want to leave you with um, just one kind of case example. These are two students that I work with. They went to the same high school. One had a 2.6 GPA, and the EFC was 24000 They paid twenty five. This student started the summer before their senior year. This one had a 3.5 GPA. And their EFC was 5600 But they also paid $25,000. Why? Because this child and family started 14 days before the last day to submit financial aid forms. And when that happens, it's already too late to apply to colleges that can give you enough money. With this, with this expected family contribution, they could have paid $5,500, $5,600. But because they waited till 14 days before the deadline, they got, they didn't get too much. This child is going to have to transfer to a school that's going to make it cost $5,600. And I just show you that because you got a 2.6 GPA student who really ended up in better shape than a 3.5 student. Why? Because he started early and started on time. So we've covered a lot of material in this webinar. It's just really designed to inspire you to take action now. You know, because if you wait nine months from now, it'll be too late. You'll be looking to take action when all the parents are getting award letters and admissions letters. Um, and that's a little too late to be figuring things out. You know, that's if you're a senior. If you're a junior, you know, the, your child's going to be a junior next year or a sophomore next year. The number, number one question is, when would you want to know how much you're expected to pay for college? When would you want to know that? And if you're a senior, this is the last summer that you'll have to truly work towards getting scholarships and grants. You know, this is worth a lot of money. We're playing for the big money here. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships. So we really got to be on our A game. And we have to know what our milestone is and what we need to be doing every month and what our priorities are. So every month counts now. So if you want to get started putting a plan together, the first step is to call 626-657-7887. We'll talk briefly see if I can help you guide you and your student through the process and if we determine I can help we'll schedule a free one-hour consultation and at this consultation we'll find out how much free money you can get and set up a game plan for you and your student okay well anyway I hope this is a great use of your time I hope you learned a lot hope we kind of put together the strategy and the game plan at least the first couple steps giving you a running start so if you want to start get started and get a game plan find out how much money you can get 
how much you qualify for, what, what's the most important things you need to do to get $100,000 in scholarships and grants, $200,000. Call 626-657-7887. If I don't pick up or if we don't pick up, leave us a message and we'll call you right back. Thanks.